Now I want to share with you, the, as I said this morning, the thoughts of the battle for your soul. Or the battle for our soul. And folks, I must tell you, this is not a sermon the enemy wants me to preach. This is not a sermon that he's sitting back and allowing me to go ahead. The enemy has tried to raise hell all around me this morning as I've tried to get ready and prepared. But I'm here to tell you, the enemy cannot stop me. The enemy has no power over me this morning because there is somebody that needs to hear this word in the house. And I want you to know this morning, if you don't already know it, there is a battle for your soul. There is a battle for your life. The enemy does not like you. The enemy is not happy with you. And the enemy would rather see you destroyed than living life as you're living it right now. How many you know that you have some bad days from time to time that things just happen? Well, let me help you here. It isn't God. It's the enemy. The enemy is doing all he can to distract and destroy us and to take our focus off of God. And you know what? He's winning in a lot of cases. People are so bombarded by the things of the enemy. They're bombarded by the attack of the enemy. And what is happening in our world today and folks, these things that go on around us are not by accident. They are not by chance. It's not just a random act of violence, but I believe wholeheartedly that it is a spiritual thing going on in the world today. The enemy knows that his days are numbered and he's doing all that he can to distract us, to destroy us, to get us off the line and knowing what God has for us. Amen. How many of you have ever fought for something you liked or wanted real bad? Yeah. Did you fight your hardest? Did you give it your all? Did you stand back and say, there's no way? Let me help you here. If I was to walk into your house while you were gone and started to take your stuff and you met me at the front door, would you do something to stop me from taking your stuff? Yeah. Y'all are so generous. <laughs> Can I tell you, the enemy does that day by day, by day, by day, by day, by day, by day. The enemy is trying to come and take what is not rightfully his. And my friend, it is a battle for your soul. It is a battle for your life. The enemy doesn't want anything good to happen to you. He wants to destroy you. But aren't you glad this morning that there is a God in heaven that is also fighting for your soul? Because the scripture declares that he's come to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly. God is on your side. But there is a battle for our soul. Now in this battle, I want you to understand this morning that the scripture declares in Ephesians chapter 6 that the battle is not between flesh and blood. It's not between your brother and your sister. It's not between you and your neighbor. It's not between you and your co-worker. It's not between you and the person you sit next to at church. The battle is against the principalities and the darkness of this world. And he is out to destroy your life. Can I tell you that the enemy is quite satisfied in sitting back and letting us grumble and grumble amongst ourselves because you know what that tells him? He is winning the battle. You're making his job a whole lot easier. Brother Allen, I was listening to a preacher preach and he come upon this passage which I have read many times before but I had never paid attention to this verse 16 says that Paul and Silas were on their way to pray they were on their way to the temple they were on their way to the house of God Amen. isn't that what we ought to be doing at church is praying yeah. amen but the scripture declares that a damsel or a slave girl approached them with a spirit of divination. Can I help you here this morning? That word div divination in the Greek means python. 
basically saying that this woman approached him with the spirit of Python on her life. And that spirit was not there to entertain them. That spirit was there to distract them and ultimately to destroy them. Because that spirit knew what Paul and Silas were doing. Can I help you here this morning? The devil is not so stupid that he doesn't know what you're doing. I'm not here to give him credit, but I am here to help you out this morning. The spirit of Python. I want you to grab a hold of this because this will revolutionize your life. A python approaches, approaches its prey differently than any other animal in the animal kingdom. It doesn't destroy you with its bite. It doesn't destroy you with its power. Ultimately it does. But that's not its approach. It's not necessarily overly sly and keen in what it's doing. But when it attacks, it doesn't attack and knock you out instantly. A python wraps itself around you to squeeze the life out of you. It does it slowly. It does it methodically. But it does it with great pressure. They have tested a python approaching its prey and attacking. And they said it is a known fact that when they start to squeeze, that it squeezes with tons. Thousands of tons of pressure. Have you ever seen a time like we are living in today with the pressure? Come on somebody. That we are under... Hear me, the enemy is pressuring the church like it has never pressured it before. The enemy was to put a strong hold on these people. There's three things I want you to listen to this morning. Three. Sorry, I went two, didn't I? Three. My little grass hit him. Three. Number one, in the battle for your soul, you must know your enemy. Did you know that any great general or leader of war they always knew their enemy. They scouted out. They checked out. They did all the stuff necessary so that they knew the proper manner on which to defeat their enemy. They were prepared. If you want to win this battle for your soul, you better be prepared. You better know who your enemy is. If you don't know, I'm going to help you. You're going to walk out today knowing who your enemy is. Is that all right? The scripture declares that the enemy is being the devil or Satan himself. The scripture declares that he is a liar. He is a deceiver. He is an accuser. Of the brethren. Not the world. The brethren. That being the church. That being you and me. We need to know who we're fighting against. The enemy does not play games. The enemy does not mess around. The enemy is very serious. 
serious about what he's doing in the world today because he knows that his days are numbered. And my friend, we better be serious about what we are dealing with.
I will tell you this, a snake shows up in my toilet or in my bathtub one day, yeah, you won't hear this preacher scream, I can tell you that right now. They need to stay away from those places, but it happens. But he slowly works his way. <laughs> this isn't going to be as bad as you think. We will have probably to go home and take a shower though, because I am sweating like a pig. <laughs> but Harrison, he just keeps working his way closer and closer. I maybe I'll have your wife doing this. It'd probably be more appropriate, wouldn't it? Squeezing. But he gets his lie, he gets his hold. And little by little. Turn for me. Turn, 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 turn. <laughs> little by little. He doesn't do it quickly. But he starts squeezing. And he starts squeezing. Are you hurting? Okay. You're pretty buff, boy. Tell me you're like. But he starts squeezing. And he starts squeezing. And he starts squeezing. And you know what? You do this long enough, and I'll bring him to his knees. I will take him down because, see, that's what happens. The enemy just keeps squeezing and squeezing and squeezing. Who takes the life out of you? You got a doctor's bill just tell me. <laughs> but hear me. The enemy don't let go real easy. Because once he gets his clutches in you, he's going to hang on for dear life. Because it's a battle for your soul. He wants you. He wants to destroy you. He wants to take the life out of you. He doesn't want God fulfilling your destiny in your life. He is out for your soul. I am obligated as your pastor to tell you the truth. I will not candy coat the gospel and tell you that you know what? You don't have to worry about the devil. You don't have to worry about what he's going to do. I'm here to tell you he is out to destroy your life because he knows God's plans for you. And if you allow him to, listen to me, if you allow him to, he will squeeze the life out of you. You know what he's trying to do with David? He's trying to squeeze the backbone of America. You know who the backbone of America is? It's the church. The church. The church. This nation was founded on God and the church. The church. And he's trying to break our backs. He's trying to squeeze us and break our backs. But my friend, I've come to declare
Now that you know who your enemy is, now it's time to know who you are. Yeah. 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 Point number two. In the battle for your soul, you must know who you are in Christ. Do you know who you are? A few. I'll ask that again. Do you know who you are? Yes. They're eventually going to get this. Do you know who you are? I will help you here because I just feel like I need to. We are the church, not of Blackrock, not a new life, but we are the church of the most high God. We serve the God that is greater than all things. There is not a being out there that is greater than God. And with God in us, who can be against us? Because if God is for us, he will carry us through to the very end. Well, I was in here praying this morning. And God started speaking to me about today. And he said, Chad, you want to know who the church is? I said, oh, I do, God. I do. Tell me. Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. He said, do you remember the story of David? When David went out to Goliath. And David was a, a small man. He wasn't big as anything. David or Goliath was a giant. He was a man of stature. He was a man of war. He was a warrior. Had never been defeated before. But old David. Cocky little teenage boy. Walked out there. And said look. Goliath. I got news for you. You come to me. With a sword and a spear. But I come to you. In the name of the Lord. King of kings and Lord of lords, and I will not be defeated. <laughs> Do you know who you are? <sighs> when you know who you are, you will operate in your dominion and your power, and your authority that has been given to you by God Almighty. I hear on this last Sunday, I'm going to ring the bell again if that's all right. Folks, I've come to tell you the enemy has no right except the right that you give him. It's time that the church rise up. I said the church needs to rise up and declare to the enemy, you have no right and you have no posture. And I stand in the meeting and the thought You know why the church hasn't attained its rightful place? We forgot who we are. We are forgotten that we are the church. His church. He has empowered us. Folks, listen to your pastor. In the midst of the world when there are tornadoes, there are earthquakes, there are flooding, there is all kinds of natural disasters happening when people try to attack God's people. Guess who stands? Go slow this morning. Who stands? The church. God's people. Can I help you? When this thing all starts winding down and this thing all starts shutting up, guess who will be standing? It is God and the church. Yeah. 
You want to know why? Because every knee is going to bow down at his name. And they are going to declare that he is king of kings and lord of lords. Who we believed in and who we follow does not stand any longer. It is Krishna are all going to bow down at the feet of Jesus. To battle for your soul. And who side are you on? I am like the Apostle Paul that declared, I am persuaded that he will keep me unto that day. Let me tell you how it happens. I believe it's in Zachariah, if I'm not mistaken, where they declare that it's not by my might, nor by my power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Folks, get ready. It's going to happen by the spirit.
you hear this preacher. Washington, D.C. is about to get shook up like it's never been shook before. God is releasing his power. God is releasing his anointing on the church. And a shaking is going on. And God's about to shake the world up and declare to them that I am still God. It's a battle for your soul. It's a battle for your spouse's soul. It's a battle for your kid's soul. It's a battle for your grandkid's soul. How hard are you going to fight? Folks, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt there are people here the enemy's trying to squeeze the life out of you. I come to declare to you today God has come set you free. Because hear me, a normal python may not let go, but the Spirit of God python has to release his hold when God speaks. And you hear me, it's relinquishing its hold because God is standing up and saying enough is enough. Why? Because the church is standing up and saying enough is enough. How much do you care for your kids, your grandkids? How much do you care for the person you work beside? How much do you care for your neighbor? How much do you care for that person that you walk beside and want? Do you care about their soul? It's a battle. One thing I've told you know, Sean, as much as we might think we know, we don't always know that much. Amen. One thing I found out about people, we don't always know what they're going through. And if it means me speaking a kind word, and if it means me having an opportunity to speak the word of God into their life, guess what I'm going to do? If anything, I'm going to plant a seed. And somebody come along and water that seed. And after it gets watered, eventually that seed is going to burst forth. And the harvest is going to come. Isn't that reason enough? Say, I will. I will. I will. It's a battle for the souls of mankind. It's a battle of the souls for your neighbor, for your spouse, for your kids. What are you going to do? Are you going to let them die? Or are you going to take a stand? I don't get on Facebook a lot, but I get on periodically just to kind of see where people are at with things sometimes. And I was going through and somebody had posted a, a post on my wife's Facebook about a young man by the name of Nick. And Nick was, has a rare disease. He was born with no limbs. He has no arms and no legs. He said, for a long time, I kept asking God, why did you even make me? Why am I even here? And he said, God took me to John chapter 9. To fulfill the works that I've laid before you. He 
give his heart to Jesus. Because of his life, doors of opportunity started opening for this young man. In one year, one year alone, maybe a couple years, it, it, well, no, that's not right, but in his story, his, his ministry's not been going on that long. He's been able to speak in over 2,000 meetings. He has shared the gospel with not thousands, but millions. And the years of his ministry, they have overseen, they have seen over hundreds of thousands of people saved. Not just a few, hundreds of thousands. <coughs> this young man gets up, they give him a box, whatever, so people can see him, and he speaks to multitudes of people. I mean, masses. He has been hundreds of countries. He shared this story. He said there was a young man. He said, my first speaking engagement was at a high school. About 300 students, something like that. And he said, as I began to share my story, all the girls in the crowd began weeping, crying. He said, but there was one young lady that was weeping uncontrollably. And she come down out of the bleachers and said, can I give you a hug? And she did. And she whispered in his ear and said, nobody has ever told me before they love me. You are the first one. And to know that God loves me means even more. That young lady gave her heart to God right there on the spot. Amen. And God spoke to him and said, this is what I'm going to do through you. His ministry is called Life Without Limbs. Now, I said that story and shared it to save this one statement because this is what God said to me. He has no limbs. What's your excuse? New life? What's our excuse? Are you ready for revival to hit Black Rock? To hit Orange County? To hit the surrounding cities? What's our excuse? It's a battle for the souls of mankind. What are we going to do about it?